Today, BRS TV investigates the most important episode in our lighting series, the quality of light, per and the difference between spectrum that grows coral and one that simply makes them visible. We'll share what good looks like, why the wide blue band is the best for biology, and data on dozens of different lights that perform to that standard. Our per and light quality test is simple. Does the light have a wide blue band in the 410 to 484 range we recommend for supplementing energy needs and health of corals? We also test each individual channel for spectrum peaks, optimized to the coral's primary energy collection pigments of chlorophyll A, C2, and the carotenoid peridinin. You may think of spectrum as colors like violet, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. However, biologists and those that engineer our lights are thinking of them as nanometers or wavelengths of light. Why say nanometers rather than the color blue? Well, interpretations of color change between individuals. Nanometers are consistent and accurate. We identify visible purple colored ultraviolet A light as ranging from 380 to 400 nanometers, violet from 400 to 430, indigo from 430 to 450, blue from 450 to 470, light blue from 470 to 490, and cyan from 490 to 520 nanometers. People do believe the colors start or stop at different ranges, but how the corals utilize the wavelengths is fairly consistent and why our test is based on wavelengths and nanometers. Why is PER or identifying the quality of light dependent on knowing these wavelengths? It's because every coral requires chlorophyll A to live and dependent on it for capturing and producing energy. This is a chart where chlorophyll A collects that light energy most efficiently. And there's one specific peak where it does it better than anywhere else, 410 to 430 nanometers. Lower or higher than that, it's just much less efficient. Chlorophyll C2, sometimes referred to as an accessory pigment, expands the usable light to the coral into the indigo and blue range with a very narrow peak at 450 nanometers, where it's most efficient. As an accessory pigment, chlorophyll C2 is capable of collecting indigo to blue light and passing it back to chlorophyll A, essentially creating a wider spectrum sweet spot and increasing the per range. Peridinin, also known as an accessory pigment, collects light efficiently over a wide range of light, including the same peaks as both the chlorophyll A and C2, but adds the ability to capture light blue light at the peak of 484 as well. When we combine chlorophyll A, C2, and peridinin peaks together, we create a wide blue band between 410 and 484 of high per light, and I believe every marine biologist would agree that a light source that includes a wide spectrum offering in this range is a higher quality light source for the application of caring for corals than one that's missing or severely limited in this area. So that's exactly what we're testing dozens of lights for today. Which channels are per optimized for chlorophyll A peaks in the ultraviolet to violet range, C2 peaks in the indigo to blue range, and that shoulder of perdinin which expands into the light blue range. When they combine together 100%, how do they blend and perform on our wide blue biology based band? You have a couple dozen light sources, watch them all, scrub the timelines for the lights you're interested in, and I'll share at the end some of my personal findings, including why we didn't prioritize red or orange light in these tests. Starting with the Hydra 32 with eight channel adjustments, two chlorophyll A focused channels, a near ultraviolet 403, and a violet 415, a chlorophyll C2 focused channel, an indigo to blue 448, and a cool white 439. One per dinner and shoulder focused channel, a light blue 471. The Hydra 32 also includes two color accessory channels of a green 522 and a red 660. Combined together at 100% all channels, a significant representation within our blue biology band and a 448 peak. Next, the Red Sea Reef Lead 50 with two channel adjustments, an indigo blue 450 channel, which hits a limited portion of the chlorophyll A absorption peak, significant chlorophyll C2 coverage, and a 448 cool white which hits a limited portion of the chlorophyll A absorption peak, but a significant portion of the chlorophyll C2 coverage and limited coverage in the peridinian shoulder. Combined together at 100% all channels, the Red Sea Reef Lead 50 has a moderate representation within our blue biology band and a 450 peak. Next, the MaxSpec Jump 165 with six channel adjustments, one chlorophyll A focused channel with two peaks, one near the ultraviolet 400 peak and a violet 434 peak a one chlorophyll C2 focus channel, a blue to light blue 445, one per dinin and shoulder focus channel, the same light blue 445 peak. The jump 165 also includes three color accessory channels of a green 521, an orange to red 627, and a color channel of ultra warm white 600. Combined together 100% all channels, a significant representation within our blue biology band and a 463 peak. 
Next, the Kessel A360X with four channel adjustments, two chlorophyll A focus channel, a violet 428, and the full spectrum channel of 456, one chlorophyll C2 focus channel, also the full spectrum 456, one peridinin and shoulder focus channels, also the full spectrum 456. The Kessel A360X also includes two color accessory channels of a green 514 and an orange red 633, combined together 100% all channels and 50% color in the primary a significant representation in our wide blue biology band and 431 peak. Next, the ATI SunPower 8 bulb with the BRS recommended mix of four Blue Plus, two Coral Plus, and two Atenix. With zero channel adjustments, you have to change the bulbs to change the spectrum. A recommended blend with strong representation into the chlorophyll A zone. Also strong representation in the chlorophyll C2 zone and reasonable representation in the peridinidin zone. Overall significant coverage in our wide blue biology zone with a 436 peak that prioritizes chlorophyll A. If you do want to adjust spectrum with the ATI sun power with bulb changes, we do have an investigates called what makes T5 the gold standard. But the basis of that is the blue plus is the baseline that hits chlorophyll A peak, the chlorophyll C2 peak, and some of the peridin shoulder. The coral plus adds in some green, yellow, and orange to give a wider appearance and highlight coral color pigments. The purple plus adds in a bit more orangey red, which the eye perceives as purple when mixed with blue. And the aqua blue special adds in a lot more of the color range to create a wider lamp, particularly green, which the eye perceives as brightness. The only one that falls outside of that is the atinic, which is very clearly a violet lamp that targets the chlorophyll A zone. This is where all the traditional atinic lights are, near UV to violet light. Next, the AI Prime with eight channel adjustments, two chlorophyll A focus channels, a near ultraviolet 407, and a violet 418, two chlorophyll C2 channels, an indigo to blue 448, and a cool white 448. One peridinin and shoulder focus channel, a light blue 468, and the AI Prime also includes two color accessory channels of green 522 and a red 660 combined together at 100% all channels, a significant representation within our blue biology band and a 450 peak. Next, the XHO Atinic with one channel adjustment, an indigo blue to light blue mix with a 448 peak, a minimal chlorophyll A coverage, significant chlorophyll C2 coverage, and a moderate peridin and shoulder coverage with a moderate representation of our blue biology brand. Next, an Orphic OR3 Blue Plus with one channel adjustment, a violet indigo blue to light blue mix with a 443 peak with a significant chlorophyll A coverage, significant chlorophyll C2 coverage, and a minimal peridinin shoulder coverage with a significant representation within our blue biology band. Next, the AI Blade Glow with a three channel adjustments, two chlorophyll A focus channels, a near ultraviolet 406 and a violet 419, a chlorophyll C2 focus channel, an indigo to blue 446 combined together at 100% all channels, a moderate representation with our blue biology band and a 446 peak. However, I suspect that many reefers will choose to use the Blade's overdrive feature to scale up the near UV and violet channels and create more of a true atinic light. Next, the ATI Stratton with seven channel adjustments, two chlorophyll A focus channels, an ultraviolet 400 and a violet 415, two chlorophyll C2 focus channels, an indigo to blue 449, a cool white 445, two peridinin and shoulder focus channels, a light blue 465 and a cyan 497. The ATI Stratton also includes one color accessory channel of an orange red 631 channel combined together 100% all channels, a significant representation within our blue biology band and a 463 peak between the chlorophyll C2 and peridinin and adsorption efficiency peaks. Next, the Orphic Atlantic Icon with six channel adjustments, two chlorophyll A focus channels, a near ultraviolet 408 and a violet 416, four chlorophyll C2 focus channels, an indigo to blue 443 and a white 441 and a color channel 441. One peridinin and shoulder focus channel, a light blue 466 combined together at 100% all channels, a moderate representation within our blue biology band and a 441 peak. Next, the XHO 5050 with one channel adjustment, a mix of indigo blue and cool white with a 448 peak, minimal chlorophyll A coverage, significant chlorophyll C2 coverage, and minimal peridinidin shoulder coverage, with a moderate representation within our blue biology band. 
Next, the Orphic OR3 Day Plus with one channel adjustment, a violet, indigo blue to light blue mix with a 451 peak, a moderate chlorophyll A coverage, significant chlorophyll C2 coverage, and minimal peridinin shoulder coverage. This light also adds in additional color to make a wider light ranging all the way up to a near infrared peak of 740 with a moderate representation within our blue biology band. Next, the AI Blade Grow with three channel adjustments. One limited chlorophyll A focus channel, the indigo to blue 446. Two chlorophyll C2 focus channels, that same indigo to blue 446, and a cool white 450, one peridinin and shoulder focus channel, and light blue 472 combined together at 100% all channels, a moderate representation within our blue biology band, and a 446 peak. Next, the Radeon XR30 Blue with seven channel adjustments, two chlorophyll A focus channels, a wide near ultraviolet 409 and a violet 422, three chlorophyll C2 focus channels, an indigo to blue 444, a cool white 445, and a warm white 445. One per dinin and shoulder focus channel, a light blue 473. The Radeon XR30 Blue also includes one color accessory channel of red 663, a combined together, 100% all channels, significant representation within our blue biology band in a 445 peak. Next, the Reef LED 160 with two channel adjustments, the indigo to blue 449 channel, which hits a limited portion of the chlorophyll A absorption peak, significant portion of the chlorophyll C2 peak, and the 448 cool white, which hits a limited portion of the chlorophyll A absorption peak, significant chlorophyll C2 coverage, but limited coverage in the perdinid and shoulder. Combined together, 100% all channels. The Red Sea Reef LED 50 has a moderate representation within our blue biology band. Next, the Mitra 6 with nine channel adjustments, three chlorophyll A focus channels, an ultraviolet 385, a violet 420, and an indigo white 434. Three chlorophyll C2 focus channels, an indigo to blue 448, and a white 442, and a slightly cooler white at 441. One per and shoulder focus channel, light blue 469. The Mitra 6 also includes two color accessory channels of a green 513 and a red 658 channel combined together 100% all channels, a significant representation within our blue biology band and a 446 peak. Next, the Kessel 500X with four channel adjustments, two chlorophyll A focus channels, a violet 431, and the full spectrum channel 458. One chlorophyll C2 focus channel, also the full spectrum 458. One peridinin and shoulder focus channel, also the full spectrum 458. The Kessel 500X also includes two accessory channels. One green 511, an orange red 635. Combined together, 100% all channels, 50% color in the primary, a significant representation within our blue biology band, and a 457 peak. Next, the Aquamax Prism with four channel adjustments, two chlorophyll A focus channels, a UVA 394 color channel, a violet to indigo 437, two chlorophyll C2 focus channels, an indigo to blue 454, and a cool white 454, one per dinin and shoulder focus channel with limited representation in the cool white. Combined together, 100% all channels, a moderate representation within our blue biology band, and a 437 peak. Next, the Radeon XR15 Blue with seven channel adjustments, two chlorophyll A focus channels, a wide near ultraviolet 408, and a violet 422, three chlorophyll C2 focus channels, an indigo to blue 444, and a cool white 445, and a warm white 447. One per din and shoulder focus channel, a light blue 472, and the Radeon XR30 Blue also includes one color accessory channel of red 663. Combined all together, 100% all channels, a significant representation within our blue biology band and a 444 peak. Next, the Radeon XR15 Pro with eight channel adjustments, two chlorophyll A focus channels, a wide near ultraviolet 409, and a violet 424, three chlorophyll C2 focus channels, an indigo to blue 443, and a cool white 447, and a warm white 447. One per dinin and shoulder focus channel, a light blue 472. The Radeon XR15 also has two color accessory channels of a green 520 and a red 661 channel. Combined together, 100% all channels, a significant representation within our blue biology band and a 444 peak. Next, the Hydra 64 with eight channel adjustments, two chlorophyll A focus channels, a near ultraviolet 408 and a violet 413, two chlorophyll C2 focus channels, an indigo to blue 445 and a cool white 439. One per dinin and shoulder focus channel, a light blue 471. The Hydra 32 also includes two color accessory channels of a green 522 and a red 655 combined together 100% all channels, a significant representation within our blue biology band and a 445 peak.
Next, the Reef Breeders Photon with six channel adjustments, one chlorophyll A focus channel, a violet 415, two chlorophyll C2 focus channels, a blue 447 and a warm white 443, one peridinin and shoulder focus channel, a light blue 467. The Photon also includes two color accessory channels of a green 517 and a red 661 channel combined together at 100% all channels, a moderate representation within our blue biology band and a 447 peak. Next, the Neptune Sky with four channel adjustments, one chlorophyll A focus channel with a near ultraviolet 398 and 424 peaks, two chlorophyll C2 fit channels, and a blue 441 and a cool white 443. One peridinin and shoulder focus channel, a color channel 498 combined together at 100% all channels moderate representation within our blue biology band and a 441 peak. Next, the Kessel AP9X with four channel adjustments, two chlorophyll A focus channels, a violet 428, and the full spectrum channel 456. One chlorophyll C2 focus channel, also the full spectrum 456, and one peridinin and shoulder focus channel, also the full spectrum 456. The Kessel AP9X also includes two color accessory channels of a green 518 and an orange 663 combined together at 100% all channels. 50% color on the primary, a significant representation within our blue biology band and a 455 peak. Next, the Mitris 4 with nine channel adjustments, three chlorophyll A focus channels, an ultraviolet 385, a violet 420, and an indigo white 433, three chlorophyll C2 focus channels, an indigo to blue 448, a white 444, and a slightly cooler white 446, one perdinin and shoulder focus channel, a light blue 469. The Mitris 4 also includes two color accessory channels of a green 513 and a red 660 channel combined together at 100% all channels, a significant representation within our blue biology band and a 447 peak. Next, the Radeon XR30 Pro with eight channel adjustments, two chlorophyll A focus channels, a wide near ultraviolet 411 and a violet 424. Three chlorophyll C2 focus channels, an indigo to blue 446, and a cool white 445, and a warm white 445. One per dinin and shoulder focus channel, the light blue 465. The Radeon XR30 Pro also includes two color accessory channels of green 518 and a red 663 channel combined together at 100% all channels, a significant representation within our blue biology band, and a 448 peak. Next, the current USA R24 with four channel adjustments, one chlorophyll A focus channel, a violet to blue 443, two chlorophyll C2 focus channels, a violet to blue 443, and a cool white 450, one per dinner and shoulder focus channels, a cyan 496. The R24 also includes one color accessory channel of a red 665 channel combined together at 100% all channels, a moderate representation within our blue biology band, and a 444 peak. Next, the MaxSpec Razor with four channel adjustments, one chlorophyll A focus channel, an ultraviolet to violet channel with 386 and 413 peaks, two chlorophyll C2 focus channels, an indigo to light blue 440, and a very cool white 443. One peridinin and shoulder focus channel, the same indigo to light blue 443. The Razor also includes one color accessory channel of a full color 660 channel combined together 100% all channels, a moderate representation within our blue biology band and a 441 peak. Next, the Reef Lead 90 with two channel adjustments, an indigo blue to 450 channel, which has limited portion of the chlorophyll A absorption peak, significant chlorophyll C2 coverage, and a 448 cool white, which hits a limited portion of the chlorophyll A absorption peak, significant portion of the chlorophyll C2 coverage, and limited coverage in the perdinin and shoulder. Combined together, 100% all channels, the Red Sea Reef Lead 50 has a moderate representation within our blue biology band and a 450 peak. Next, the Aquamax CC2 with four channel adjustments, two chlorophyll A focus channels, a UVA 437 color channel, a violet to indigo 437, two chlorophyll C2 focus channels, a blue to light blue 456, and a cool white 454, one per dinin and shoulder focus channel with a limited representation in the cool white. Combined together, 100% all channels, moderate representation within our blue biology band and a 438 peak. So what did I learn from all this? And I'm sure some common questions that all of you may have. First, if chlorophyll A and C2 can utilize and likely require light in the orange to red range, why are these not prioritized in this test? Simple. 
we believe this is still a debatable topic. We know that the deeper you go in the ocean, the less orange and red light there is available. We also know that historic light sources like the ATI Blue Plus has near zero orange and red light, and many of the thought leaders that I've spoken to believe that the corals are capable of a chain of fluorescence where the corals can take in blue light and then re-emit the light back out at higher wavelengths in the orange to red zone where it can actually reabsorb its own light. There may be some benefit to providing additional red light, but many also theorize that overexposure to red may actually inhibit photosynthesis or harm the coral. The science is not clear or largely agreed upon, and it's not required for success. In any case, for those that do value or want to trailblaze the orange and red channels, the data is there for you to make the best decisions. The orange and red channels certainly will be valuable when we discuss coral coloration next week. Second, similar to that, why did we not prioritize true UV or a near 380 in our blue biology band? Well, we also believe this is an area for some debate. None of the thought leaders that I've spoken to are in agreement or completely convinced that true UV is critical spectrum to supplement. Most of it is a theoretical discussion. Historical success with lamps like the ATI Blue Plus that do not have true UV suggests that it's not critical to success as well. We may find out in the future that high energy UVA is both highly valuable and figure out how much to use, but that's not clear or agreed upon today. However, again, the data is here for those that do want to prioritize 380 UV in their decisions. By prioritizing the wide blue 410 to 484 brand, we're prioritizing what good to great looks like and something that will easily support a wide range of corals in our tanks. Those pursuing perfection and that next wave of progress are still exploring how true UV, orange, and red fit into the equation. Third, why peridinin rather than total carotenoids? Carotenoids are a big category of pigments, but over 70% of the carotenoids in the coral are thought to be perdinanin. Perdinanin also combines with the chlorophyll to create PCP, perdinanin chlorophyll proteins, as a major energy driver for the corals. For the sake of identifying spectrum that's highly valuable to the coral's energy production, perdinanin is our focus within the carotenoids, specifically that light blue shoulder that the other peaks miss. Fourth, this is one of the questions that came up for me personally during this test. No coral can live without chlorophyll A, and it's believed that chlorophyll A might actually outnumber chlorophyll C2 by a factor as much as 10 to 1. So if chlorophyll A is the primary pigment, an energy producer, collecting light between 410 and 430, and historical lights like the ATI Blue Plus prioritize that 430 violet light, why are so many of today's lights focused on chlorophyll C2 peak and 450? Turns out the answer is at least partially technology-based. Historically, it was just hard to get a consistent supply of violet to indigo LEDs. The ones that existed were almost 10 times as expensive as the 450 peak royal blues and 450 peak cool whites. Hence why some of the most affordable lights out there were almost exclusively royal blue and cool whites. Technology's caught up and they're no longer 10 times as much, but you can still see that price disparity in the AI Blade Glow Atinic, where the price reflects how the near to UV and violet LEDs are just more expensive than the LEDs in the Grow, which is a whiter LED. In some ways, the Glow Atinic representing the missing piece of the spectrum puzzle for many lights and why they will be used as supplements for them. And the whiter Grow, one of the most affordable ways to add photosynthetic energy to the tank. Fifth, there's one other missing piece to this puzzle. The fact that all of these lights are actually adjustable. Specifically, the lights that are not dependent on running at all channels at 100%. For instance, with the Radeon Blue, we see the seven channels cover the entire spectrum of blue. Combined together, a wide blue band at the bottom of the spectrum chart, but a sharp peak at 450. Looking at this, you might think that the spectrum is thinner than some of the other options but these charts are ratios, which means that there's just a lot of 450 royal blue. If we turn down that one channel, the royal blue, down 50%, we now have one of the widest blue spectrums out there and balanced peaks with each other. So why the extra royal blue? Well, lots of reefers like to add more 450 royal blue to the mix because it fluoresces many corals well and brings out that atinic pop. Historically, most commonly with the Reef Bright XHO strips, so lights like these are essentially a wide blue band light with extra fluorescence channel built in. 
This is true of any light that can demonstrate a wide offering at the bottom third of the spectrum base and gives you control over the individual peaks and has enough power that you can turn down the 450s without par concerns. This capability is the benefit of picking up a light that has slightly more power output than you'd actually need. Six, for those of you that have lights that are missing some of that wider blue spectrums, either at the near UV or violet or the light blue end, that's why supplemental lighting options are becoming more and more common. They allow you to adjust your lights to today's biology and technology standards without buying all new gear. This is true of both spectrum as well as fill light and the shadow reduction performance from our first episode. The best performance when both your supplemental or fill light is designed to work at the same mounting height as your primary light. And seventh, after reviewing all of these spectrum charts as well as where we've seen the most success, I believe I have what makes up good, better, best in terms of spectrum. And I'd say that good means that you're providing light over multiple chlorophyll and perdenanin spectrum peaks. It doesn't have to be perfect or an enormous amount over all three, but the best you can. Better means that the light is capable of filling up a majority of that wide blue band and serves multiple angles of biology. Best means a light that's wide enough and strong enough that you can combine it with today's knowledge to create a wide blue biology baseline, and then adding other color and fluorescence peaks to adjust for your color and biology simultaneously. That's next, Beers TV investigates the color of light. We talk nanometers and biology today, but how do we use that to highlight natural coral coloration and fluorescence? That's right here in the entire LED Showdown playlist right here.